into this podcast. Do me a favor and head over to the tcpnetwork.com. TCP or The Culture Professional is Pennsylvania's first digital platform to highlight the voices of disenfranchised groups. With 13 podcasts and counting, there's something for everyone. Entertainment a la carte is what we like to say. Again, that's the tcpnetwork.com and The Culture Professional on Facebook. TCP, it's a movement, not a moment. Dana Hamp Gulick. I'm a candidate for the 96th House District, and this is my story. Born here in Lancaster, um, I went to Manheim Township High School. I went to the University of Pittsburgh, where I earned two bachelor's degrees, in one in German language and one in communications. Um, and then I started my career in marketing. People should vote for me because I'm going to bring the, the bold moves and the vocal advocacy and the willingness to really be strategic and to push on pushable places and pull on the pullable ones. I'm going to do the work that I think is not being done in this district right now. Most important is that I am a single mother to a 17-year-old daughter. I am a caregiver to my aging mother and I serve on the board of two local nonprofits that help families in crisis. 2022 brings us a brand new district in the 96 that has been redrawn and we have an opportunity to send two Democrats from Lancaster County to Harrisburg for the very first time ever. There has been the same representative here for 30 years and a lot has changed in 30 years. Uh, the world has changed drastically since my opponent was first elected. And I think now is the time to replace somebody who is comfortable and out of touch with somebody who is hungry and passionate and, and wants to do this work. I'm going to focus on raising the minimum wage immediately so that families can work 40 hours a week and afford a place to live. Everybody Every family should be safe, healthy, and thriving. And I think I'm the, the person for that at this time. My name is Dana Hamp Gulick. I'm candidate for State House in the new 96th District, and I approve this message. Good morning. Wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake, Wake up. up. Wake 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 up. It's TCP in the morning. 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 TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing a song here in the matter. TCP in the morning. <laughs> oh man. Um another Thursday. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, feeling good, feeling, what? feeling, feeling all the feels. Um, had a had a had a great, fantastic week, man. Um, spectacular, like the oh. the the best one of um one of the best weeks um news wise that we had. Uh, very 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 informational. Uh, very 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 impactful. Um, yeah, let's give it to him, man. Hey, welcome to the welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's Thursday. Yes. Welcome back. Your squad is here. Welcome. Your team is here. Your people are here. Your folks are back. Welcome to the show. Brush your teeth. Brush your ass. We are your morning team. So happy to be here. Hey, hit the drunk poodle. Hey! Hit the drunk poodle. Oh, you got the drunk poodle. <laughs> drunk poodle. 
drunk poodle. Uh, I, I, drunk I, I, poodle. Uh, drunk poodle. Uh, <laughs> drunk poodle. Uh, <laughs> drunk poodle. 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 Thirsty Thursday or Friday. Yes. We are glad y'all tuned in. Yes. This is your first time listening and rocking with us. What up? Welcome. If you've been rocking with us for a while now. Yes. How you doing? How you doing? Say what up in the comments. Hey, Let's go, baby. what's going on? Lady Al. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you all for watching and tuning in. Hey, listen, go on ahead and share the stream. We got a fantastic show for you today. Okay. Oh, over to the desk, I guess, that was. Uh, over to the desk. All right, well, <laughs> folks, let you know, uh, my name is Marquis Lupton, also what? known as DJ Quiet Storm. <laughs> DJ Quiet Storm. One of three O's, one of four personalities on this thing we call TCP in the morning. The best thing that you can have in yo cup. DJ Double O, what's up, man? Can't, can't call him in. Just trying to get my fro in order before I get on camera. I feel like my hair makes, like, now that my hair is big, it makes my forehead look bigger. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Every time I see myself now, I feel a little self-conscious about it. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just me. I don't know how everybody else feels about my forehead. Not that y'all probably care. Anyway, I'm always glad to be here. It's yeah. Thursday or Friday. Let's get these people the news, man. Yes, yes, yes. Folks, good morning to you. Do not be rude. Say it in the comment section, you know, so that uh, we can Shout you out. Renato, good morning. Taekwondo, good morning. Lisa, good morning. Neville, good morning to you. And uh, that is that is all we have uh, for the good mornings. Um, yeah. People so, still waking up, ho huh? Hopefully they will join us uh, soon. Folks, we have a jam-packed show for you today. We are talking about eviction filings. They are uh, going up uh, to, to uh, pandemic levels. Um, uh, so this, this is getting, uh, quite serious. Um, also election fraud, uh, claims is hot on the campaign trail. Um, especially for, uh, the folks that are running for governor and, uh, U S Senate and turbo tax. If you have done turbo tax and have used it for the past, I don't know, let's say four or five years. And you see in the signage just said it's free, completely free. Well, uh, you may be up for some money, folks. All that uh, money back. Uh, 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 TurboTax uh, to pay a hundred over a hundred and forty million in a settlement over ads promising free filing. And then Yo MTV Raps are making a comeback. So is America going back to the nineties? They got to. I I I. I believe it is. Yeah, I, let's I, talk about that. Yo, I believe. Shows and policy. Yo, show, oh, <laughs> man. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ni I, mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking, of, speaking about the 1990s, it may not be the 1990s. It may be the 1890s that we're going back right. to. You didn't say what, 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 <laughs> what, uh, what, 90s. what, what century 90s. <laughs> it's a rock roll. Right, right. Um, uh, so, so, folks, buckle up. Uh, we, we have a, a great show lined up for you. Today, giving you the news you want, the news you needed, and the news that you did not know existed. Corinne, good morning. Jessica, good morning to you. Jeez, and green. Sabrina, good morning to you all. It's about that time that we give you what you want, what you needed, and what you did not know existed. Folks, this is CCP in the morning. The best thing that you can have in your cup. Bringing you the top eight at eight. And not two verses. No. Just one bar. Four bars. <laughs> That's what we're giving you. <laughs> Dang. Came for his soul. Right, so we're here, though. We're here, Sing though. Sing it with us, y'all. Hey, time to get the people, yeah. Give the people what they want. And that's the news. With the shimmy. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yeah. I want to let you know, folks, that this thing flows. Um, ebbs and flows, baby. Ebbs and flows. Uh, uh, before we begin, uh, Jessica says, TurboTax owes me. Oh, it is a good morning. And yep, we in Doc Brown's DeLorean. Yep. Hey. <laughs> Absolutely. We going, so going back, back to, to the 90s, 90s. 90s. Hopefully it's the 1990s and not... The 1890s. How many, how many gigawatts does this thing got? All right. And, and, and it all depends on who you vote for for governor. So, oh. uh, hey, hey, just just facts, man. Let, let's get into it. This comes from 
WITF eviction filings are up sharply as pandemic rental aid starts to run out. Um, as a side note, uh, before I get started, um, cities that have um that have the CARES Act money, um, they they could really use this money to you know put into some kind of rental assistance type situation. So. This, this didn't have to be like this because I'm looking at places, cities like Ephrata, um, where, where they put their CARES Act money, not all of it, but they put some of their CARES Act money into their local police department. So I mean, that's what they need. Uh, yeah. It's not it, like the police department doesn't already have the biggest budget. It, you know, and like Ephrata, so <laughs> violent. So um, <laughs> WITF, Emergency Rental Aid, has helped keep millions of people in their homes during the pandemic. But that federal program will start winding down this summer when it expects to have allocated all of the $46 billion from Congress. About half of that has been spent so far, and in some places, programs are now running out of their share of the money and shutting down. That's sending eviction filings up sharply, even as rent spikes and inflation cuts deeper into household budgets. In... In Plymouth, Minnesota, Wayne Majeski says getting eight months of federal rental aid was a huge relief. The 61-year-old works in hospitality as an executive recruiter and depends on commissions. He says his company was devastated when COVID hit and then he missed work more with the case of breakthrough COVID last fall. His kidneys and lungs have still not fully recovered and exercise can be tough. His income is still pretty spotty. But in January, Minnesota's rental assistance program ran out of money and stopped taking new applications. Mascheski's aide stopped in April, and soon he got an eviction notice. He plans to sell his car to help pay rent, and he's reached out to family and religious nonprofits uh, he once donated to, asking if they can help. If not, he says, I've got five adult kids. I may have to go live with one of them in their houses. And since Minnesota's aid program shut down, eviction filings are way up. Programs has also shut down in a number of states, including California, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Texas. Texas and Houston in particular uh, has actually been a model for the Treasury Department's emergency rent relief program. Last year, when it was having a slow, rocky start in many places, Texas was able to get uh, far more money out the door to struggling tenants because of that success. When funds ran out, uh, the Treasury Department reallocated more money, part of an effort to shift to where it's most needed. But not all landlords and property managers work with tenants to get the aid. Uh, There there is a, a single mother of six in Houston. She fell behind on rent when her kids were sick during the pandemic and she had to cut her work hours as a hostess. And she says she applied for rental assistance three times, and she found the process to be confusing. So, um, for for some, for many, um, there there isn't going to be this return back to normal. There there will never be this return back to normalcy. Uh, What it is, it's it's going to be a return to a worse situation Um, um, because of uh, everything going up. We just talked about... PPL, um, electricity, $34 extra per month starting in June. You know, the price of food is 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 going up. Uh, there's there's a story that we're going to be doing um, a, a little bit later on in this cast um, talking about higher food prices are now um, are now affecting food banks where they won't have as much food as they want to because of the high prices. So. This is a um, uh, uh, evolving, it's a uh, snowballing effect that we're uh, seeing here, Sarge. Look, um, it's, it's sad because we're seeing this happen, but yet there's still states that are returning money. Yeah. You know, in the beginning of April, there were states that were returning money. Um, if we talk about, uh, we go to Nebraska. In Nebraska, they returned like, I, forget, I didn't want to say they returned just about all their money, 
they returned tens of millions of dollars in unused rental assistance because they said they had such few renter, rentals, renters. So these states that are returning this money, are we going to put it out to other monies now? Because you have Republican governors and turning this money down, right. even though their constituents, their their state residents need, need this. And where does that money go? You know what I mean? Like, okay, they send it back. Where does that money end up now? Right. You know what I mean? Is it just going to some discretionary fund where, you know, the money always tends to disappear? You know what I mean? I think so. <laughs> Look, so state and localities, they have until September to spend their share of the first $25 billion uh, allocated, known as the ERA-1, and the second $21.55 billion, known as the ERA-2 by 2025. So far, the Treasury says $30 billion has been spent or allocated through February. So there's money that's out there. New York, New Jersey, and Texas, they're getting hundreds of million dollars in additional money. Uh, Native American tribes, including, uh, and in South Dakota, uh, they're getting tens of millions of dollars in help. So there's, there, we need help. We have the money out there. We're giving bill millions, billions of dollars to uh, Ukraine, along with weapons and everything else. So let's not forget our states. We're still in a pandemic. Yeah. All right. America, the United States, has just hit over a million deaths due to COVID-19. And you know, who, you know who beats us when it comes to the top number of COVID deaths in the, in the world? Who? Nobody. <laughs> I was, I was, we are number one. Set up. Well, we are number one when it comes to COVID deaths. America. There we go. America, number one. Get, <laughs> we get the gold medal for we're most at, deaths by COVID. We're good at something. And, and the sad thing is they're not going to stop. Right. You know, so um, I, and there's, there, there are people who are scared to get home, but people have to get back to work because they have to pay their rent yeah. so they don't get evicted. America, look out. Yeah. You know, where's that $1,600 a month? I mean, that'd be real helpful. If yeah. the homeless where's crisis was bad a year ago, it was bad before COVID. Right. You know what I mean? Imagine what this is exacerbating the problem. Right. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's chilling. Lady L? Uh, I, I think, I mean, we saw this all coming, right? I mean, there were states that were saying, oh, we don't have enough people applying for this assistance. You know, we, we don't, you know, there, you know. Here in Pennsylvania, we were talking about giving our money to our prisons. So, I mean, here's the thing. Um, in, a, in an interview with somebody who did apply for rental assistance, they applied three times and thought the process was confusing. Right? And, but here's the thing. There's no intermediary, right? So people are applying. They're saying, hey, I need these resources. But there's no actual, I don't know, social worker, case manager to really help see it all the way through i mean i think that people are, are really falling in between the cracks we have high rates of of disruption in the workflow with people transitioning jobs and leaving jobs and this is a grant funded opportunity i don't know if you guys are familiar with this but usually times when jobs are grant funded pretty much three months after the people get there they start looking for other work which then impacts their current work so if there were people who were working on folks getting this um, rental assistance and they're transitioning jobs, do you think they're focused on helping the people get the rental assistance or they're focused on their next job that they're about to take? And that all that all plays a part and even with some of our legislatures, you know, like Ayanna Presley and them who've been trying to get um, legislation passed to continue to aid and help with this, this rental issue. Right. So not only are we now piling on this false inflation, right, the Federal Reserve has increased rates. So that means that if you were going out to get a mortgage, those rates are going up now. Right. And, is, and now food is going up and now we're seeing that there's no relief for rent. That has actually, in some cases, gone up. There are landlords who raised the rent from now to, at, to the beginning of COVID. And that's something that we're having to deal with. So. You better start saving up, people. Um, saving up. Diane Yentel, um, uh, who heads the National Low Income Housing Coalition, uh, shares shares that uh, that the concern of eviction filings may eventually stabilize at a level uh, that is far worse uh, than before the pandemic, in part uh, due to the rising cost of renting a home. Uh, she says the longer we go past the time the eviction protections or resources are gone, the more we're seeing in some of these cities, eviction filings rates reach 150 to 200 percent of pre-pandemic averages. Well, before COVID-19, Yantel says some 10 million of the lowest income household paid at least 
half their income for monthly rent, and many far more than that. While some rate wages have risen during the pandemic, inflation is now eating into them, and rental prices have climbed 17% over the past year. Uh, they rose by a third in several cities in Florida and a whopping 40% in Portland, Oregon. Yentel uh, says uh, all, the, all this threatens to leave uh, even more people one financial shock away from missing rent and facing possible eviction or even homelessness. So, uh, um, yeah, this is, this is, this is, um, it's tough, you know, um, it's, it's tough. And, 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 and it's one of those things where, where it, it's like, we're looking to our elected officials, you know, um, again, on, on all levels, uh, local, state and, and federal to, to step in, whether, um, whether it's with uh, some kind of legislation, um, whether it's having some kind of, you know, uh, rental rental cap in your city. You know, we, we talk about the free market in this uh, uh, country all the time. The free market, the free market, the free market. We want the free um, market to be free. And, and sometimes it's good, other times it's bad. And in this instance, it's bad because with the free market, you have people like the energy companies that are really price gouging. When you think about oil and everything like that, you know, you have this this price gouging. So, again, um, looking at our elected officials to, to to really help out with relief, because what I talked about yesterday is reimagining America. Um, and it may be one of those things where, you know, we see more families choose to live together, you know, um, in, in a multifamily household uh, so that, you know, it spreads the responsibility of the bills. Sarge. Um, I just want to go on and say, like, our politicians matter. Um, South Dakota returned 81 million. And uh, you know what their governor said? He said, uh, our, our residents enjoy something better than uh, a handout, and that's a job. <laughs> You know, like not like just speaking based on themselves and their own opinion. You know, right. because yeah, there's they spent five million on touring, right? On touring advertisement, but when it came to these programs, they didn't get it out there at all. Right. So people didn't even know about these programs. Right. You know, speaking of all this, like uh, Lady Al talking about the mortgage rates, they jumped up two full percentage points just since the year began to five point one percent on the average thirty year fixed mortgage. And it's only May. Like the year's not done. You don't only think it's going to keep jumping. The fifth day of May. Like, the, the, the interest rates, like, that jumping up is going to affect people. Yeah. You know, and, like, we still haven't raised the minimum wage yet. Like, we stopped, we stopped giving out pandemic assistance, stopped giving out the help that's needed. Yeah. And we're just expecting Americans to go, Americans to go back to work and hope you don't die, but I uh, hope you can pay your bills, too. Right. Like, how? It's the arrogance. Um, to, to the comment section, uh, Jen, good morning to you. Uh, Nate, good morning. And uh, Re Rebecca, good morning. She says, many municipalities decided not to participate with the uh, uh, LIWEAP, Water Assistance Program, because it is too much work, paperwork, for the municipalities. Uh, Venus, good morning to you. Dr. Rick, she says, good morning from me and my friend Sasha. Uh, visiting Ew. from North Carolina, you have a new follower now. Bye. Well, Sasha, thank you very much. Make sure that you share the stream and tell your friends in North Carolina. Yeah, we're trying to come down to North Carolina and do pop-ups. The best thing to have in their cup in the morning is Melanated Media, ah, TCP, TCP, in the morning. Uh, Rebecca says the problem is you can't qualify until you are behind, but you don't want to take a chance of falling behind. For fear of eviction. That part. They didn't think about that. George, good morning to you. Says, what to do, crew? Morning blessings. Yes, morning blessings to you. And good morning, everyone. That's from Brother Sai. Brother Sai, yeah. good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Folks, make sure you share the stream. And also, put this in somebody's DM. Somebody yeah. that you think uh, could benefit from this. Slide this in their DM and say, hey. I think you would really enjoy this TCP yes. in the morning. We'd rather morning. enjoy this than some pictures of you that they don't want. <laughs> 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 all right, just saying. And to all you Grand Rising folks out there, you know, slide this in her DM and say, Grand Rising Queen. Yeah. Tell <laughs> <laughs> you hey, what, you show her this Grand Rising. Right. Your other Grand right. Rising. Right, you'll have other Grand Risings. Yeah, so yeah. as we get. <laughs>
to our next It's been a while since you can go. We haven't done any kind of dirty jokes in a while. It's been a while. He's back, y'all. Keeping it home. He's back. <laughs> He's back, y'all. Do my old man dirty laugh. <laughs> Make it extra wet. <laughs> So, <laughs> boy, you got me real moist over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, folks, um, uh, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're we're going to move on to, um, to, to our, our next story. Um, um, but, uh, uh, but for the uh, uh, time being, um, be, before, we, be, uh, before we move on, for the time being, um, uh, Cap, they uh, uh, locally here in Lancaster, uh, they they still have some rental assistance dollars available. Um, it's hell trying to uh, get get in there, but those funds are still available in Lancaster City and Lancaster County. So you can go uh, to Camp right now. We will put the um, uh, the URL in the comment section. Uh, so if you are feeling the pinch, you can get some assistance before this thing uh, runs out. Because what we don't want to do is um is our politicians take it and um and, and either use it for their own uh discretionary uses or give it to the uh local police department um so yeah folks we're gonna have that in in the comment section for you sarge next story all right our next story comes out of harrisburg all right so with two weeks until pennsylvania's primary election Republican candidates running for U.S. Senate and governor continue to sow doubts about the legitimacy of the 2020 presidential election. Well, then they call uh, they're calling people snowflakes back back in the oh, day, right? When they call them, man, yes. like, everybody was crying. Oh, yeah. you know, nah, Hillary lost. Blah. You know, remember all that? Yeah, like, we're still crying. They're like they're still crying still. about that. Still. Still. Oh, my goodness. All right. Still. So both offices are highly contested and could be critical to the outcome of Pennsylvania's 2024 presidential election, whether certifying election results or dictating election laws in the battleground state. But while Republicans have made anger over the 2020 election, a staple of this year's midterm primary campaigns, such messages could be a liability in the fall's general election campaign, pollsters say. There, Republicans can be expected to focus on inflation, the economy, and the President Joe Biden's performance, especially considering that Americans continue to feel pessimistic about the direction of the country and the national economy. Democrats, however, appear to revisit Trump's election fraud claims, tying them to the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol, and then suing Republican-sponsored election legislation that Democrats frame as an attack on voting rights. Pennsylvania's primary election is May 17th with a big and wide open Republican fields vying for the nomination for the state's open U.S. Senate seat and its open governor's office. Efforts to overturn elections and change election laws in Pennsylvania and other battleground states lost by Trump are part of the larger story playing out in some of the GOP primaries. Many of the claims target Pennsylvania. They were captured from Trump by Democrats in 2020. Candidates sometimes repeat Trump's statements about fraud or distort the action of state officials and judges in an attempt to portray Democrats as having cheated or both. In the Senate race, five of the seven de- Republicans in the primary field have refused to say whether they would have voted to certify Pennsylvania's 2020 presidential election, in which Biden beat Trump by 80,000 votes, according to the official tally. So, I want you guys to remember that. Five out of seven Republicans. Remember that number. So, you know, which five don't even need to be in your thought process? Right. Okay, the five Republicans. This is for our. This is for you conservatives, you GOPers out there that watch, that really want to know what we're saying. You know, you want to hear. Let's hear what you're saying. Let's hear from a. Uh, I know you guys think we're the left, but we're. we're I, I'm pretty much in the center. Oh, I'm left as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let y'all know. Hey, live your truth. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> live your, live yes, your truth. yes, but 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 we all have different flavors, right? Like 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 right. you get a, a left, middle right, middle left. Like you 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 get all of that besides far right. You get whatever I give you. <laughs> Sometimes you get the tip. Uh Lady L, what you got? Just the tip. Uh, so here's the thing: they're really holding on to this whole election was stolen thing. Um, many of the people that are going on the GOP side, that is what they are sticking. Too. So candidates are repeating Trump's conspiracy theories about fraud or distort the actions of state officials and judges. So there have even been some candidates. Um, f- for example, let's talk about Dr. Oz, right? We all know Dr. Oz is running. We've often um, said what the GOP party has called him in their uh, ads, a rhino. 
And so um, here's the thing. So Dr. Oz had actually um, been talking out of both sides of his mouth, for instance. Uh, he said that he, uh, he had actually said that he would have gone to uh, look further into uh, the election of 2020. He said he would have voted for that, right? And now, more recently, he's saying that by the time it gets to the Senate, it's not my job, nor should it be to question what states have said. I guess that's why he got that rhino commercial out there. So, but that's what people are doing even now. I mean, a lot of us do mail-in voting. There are people that are running in the governor's race. Uh, there are about nine people from the GOP party running in the governor's race for Pennsylvania, and they have vowed to get rid of the law for uh, mail-in voting. They are working hard at it. So these are just some things that we should know about. Again, our primaries is on May 17th. Um, and many Republicans on the Pennsylvania campaign trail also are talking about the need to expand our voter identification requirement and to ban our drop boxes, right? And so even though prosecutors have identified only about one case in 2020 of a person uh, committing voting fraud and zero evidence that the drop boxes were a conduit for fraudulent violence. Um, so people are, it's very weird. It almost seems like the, the GOP is going to say whatever they got to say to get what they need to get. I don't know how I feel about that. But I can appreciate it if I was on their, on their side. I could appreciate it. Gentlemen, on, on the, the, the article continues to say that um, many Republicans on Pennsylvania's campaign trail also talk, talk up uh, the need to expand Pennsylvania's voter identification requirement and to ban drop boxes. Uh, that's despite the fact that prosecutors identified perhaps just one case in the 2020 election of in-person fraud and zero evidence that drop boxes were a conduit for fraudulent ballots. Prosecutors brought charges in about five cases in which voters cast ballots for a dead relative or spouse. Uh, now, um, Lou Barletta uh, has, has been using this on his campaign trail. He says, listen, we know dead people have been voting in Pennsylvania all of our lives, and now they don't even have to leave the cemetery to vote. Um, and this is what he said in a debate last week. And then says uh, they can mail in their ballots now. I'm going to get rid of all of that. Mail-in voting is uh, right for fraud, ballot harvesting. We could go on and on. And the crazy thing is here, folks, is that um, all cases, all, all five cases um, of, of voter fraud in this state, all Republican. It, it's, it's not even, it's like doing something wrong. Like you don't. You do something wrong, and then you go, "Hey, look, we're gonna. I'm gonna punish everybody else for this too, okay? <laughs> like I, I did this wrong. Every GOP in the every every one of these GOPers in the nine person field has voted to repeal PA's two year old uh, two year old law that established a no excuse mail in voting law. No excuse mail in voting. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to stop trying to hush people. Trying to take away votes. Yeah, stop trying to take away. Stop doing that. That's why voting matters. Like you're, <laughs> yeah, it was your people that did it. I don't know. I liked how Georgia did their drive-through voting. I don't know why we're so antiquated. Like it's on purpose. They want to make voting harder so that less people can vote in in Texas. Texas in in Dallas specifically. They have been doing souls to the polls for decades. For decades. Now, now they're making it illegal to to gather more than 10 people. To go to a polling place. That is a direct response. <laughs> Illegal to go to the go to vote with your friends? <laughs> like why? Not, well, we go with more out. than ten with more than ten because more than ten, that's now a mob. Like like yo, this, this they yeah. they are they, they is this not? Is this yeah. not? How many peanuts are in this jar? <laughs> if you guess how many peanuts are in this jar, you go vote. How many bubbles are on this soap? If you can't, if you get it wrong, what, like what what constitutes a group of ten? Are we standing together to just make a group of us, us a group of ten? Well, like, I don't know. The Constitution you know still has black people as one third or <laughs> one fifth of a person, so technically ten of us together but we still, still eight, isn't eight, technically eight, ten, ten people. people. We still can't talk about changing that though, right? We, we're still not talking about changing that kind of stuff oh, no. though. Bruno, like we we Bruno. think these things need to be changed. We can't just 
Well, you know, it's it, it's different now. Just no, it's still it. here on paper. Yeah. We can't ignore it because it mattered for so long, and the Constitution matters. We can't pick and choose what matters out of the Constitution any longer. Mm. All right, we can t- we do that, and then look what happens. We're in 2023, or I'm sorry, 2022, going back to 1890. Well, I, I mean, hey, the Constitution says all men were created equal. It didn't say all men are equal. True. You know, uh, it, it didn't say all men will be treated equal, um, un, unfortunately. Um, so, um, uh, Rebecca says, if you need help uh, with filing um, E-R-A-P, uh, uh, L-I-H-E-A-P, LIHEAP, or uh, LIWEAP, uh, there are groups that will help. Social Services, EAS, Lancaster Stands Up, Northern Lancaster Hub, and many others. Don't hesitate to ask for help. Flex, good morning to you. And uh, Candace, uh, good, good morning to you today. Yo, did you get that invite? The princess is doing like a special cooking situation. I can't wait. What? You can't be telling America that. That was a secret. What? When are they doing that? See, to... see, 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 Lady L. Lady yeah, L. I didn't Brinson. get invited. Well, look, didn't get the message, I didn't get invited by the Brinson. That hurts my whole heart, Brinson family. Don't you got a new number? I'm pulling up. Don't you got a new number? No, I'm back. Same oh, number. oh, oh, he's back. All right. All right. Well, that's great to know. <laughs> Talk about back. Lady L, can you take us to our next story? I sure can. Listen, guys, the misinformation is targeting black people. This election cycle, so maybe you might have heard about a little uh, situation with the previous election uh, with misinformation coming out of apparently Iran and Russia. Um, So apparently it's ramping back up for another election cycle in this 2022 election season. So the midterm elections won't take place until November, but misinformation targeting black voters is expected to intensify in the coming months. Members of Congress have been warned by political experts that voters of color will be hit the hardest by the increasing number of disinformation campaigns. During a virtual hearing of the House Administration Subcommittee on Elections, uh, they have said that the misinformation machine has been weaponized and targeted at communities of color by racist and anti-democratic actors who seek to intimidate voters of color and discourage them from participating in the democratic process. Uh, Butterfield, who chairs the subcommittees, also said voters of color are targeted with disinformation narratives specifically designed to appeal to each community's concerns in a way that will alienate voters and suppress turnout. A representative from the National Urban Leagues and D.C. Bureau testified that this disinformation attacks on black communities are also a broader attack on our democracy and a threat to the national security of this nation. They've also called the misinformation movement a threat to our democracy and the free, fair and equitable access to the ballot everywhere a voter is entitled to. The FBI confirmed that both Iran and Russia interfered in the 2020 election. Per the Associated Press, U.S. intelligence official also claimed that Russia President Vladimir Putin ordered interference in the 2016 election that brought Donald Trump to the White House. Yeah, so listen, let me tell you about some of these uh, these shape-shifting misinformationers, right? It's crazy what they do. They, they, they go through a lot of stuff, and I will tell you this because I've even found myself going down a wormhole trying to figure out how were black people like voting for these folks how are y'all getting into this and i end up finding like these websites about candidates these third party websites about candidates that were just for black voters right so let's say the candidate has their main website that says you know come vote for me but then they have another website specifically with black brown faces all over it talking about come vote for me I'm going to talk about the police. I'm going to talk about safety in your community, right? Things that black people have issues with. And they they put it on these, like, well-to-do websites that make it seem like they're for us. You got black people on here smiling with quotes and everything like that. I mean, they put out a lot of energy and effort to look. Like they're going to be in support of black and brown people. And I promise you, they're really not. And not just that, um, even WhatsApp is used as a tool to share misinformation for a lot of our um, elders and a lot of black and brown people who are 
not from America, but have the ability to vote, right? There may be new citizens and everything like that, and they have the ability to vote. There's misinformation spreading across WhatsApp, directing towards them, and then they're sharing it, and it just keeps on going. Gentlemen, your thoughts? My thought is, like, we live in the um, uh, day and age now that, like, when you hear something, like, it is up to you, and, and, and I'm going to sound so harsh when I'm talking about our people, and I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, uh, but but like we we live in an era now where where it, it it will behoove you to once you find something out if you hear something to do your own research not even research because googling stuff isn't really research just just go go find the information out yourself like be, be, because some of the things that I'm hearing like like and it's and, and it's funny because like I'm hearing it in in real time in real life versus hearing it in social media. And like some of the stuff, especially about like Biden, I'm just like, where'd you hear that from? <laughs> like, oh, I saw a meme. Oh, I saw a post. Oh, I saw an article. And my next question, did you click on that article? Oh no, I just saw the headline. I got a virus when I clicked uh, on it. Like, I don't know or, why. or 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 that. Like like oh oh, when I looked at it, it looked kind of sketchy, but still the information was good. Like. Of course, like the information is going to seem it's good when juicy. it's juicy. Always... It isn't true. Exactly. <laughs> like it's dig it's digital tabloids. Right. Like it's like porn. folks, it's it's political porn. Right. Like like folks, this is the equivalent. This is the equivalent of that newspaper that is in the aisle at the supermarket when you're waiting to pay. Like like it is it is just a digitized version of that and like some of the things and and this this goes beyond politics as well like you know with credit credit reporting and everything athletics there's some fake stuff out there about LeBron James and it, like people people just love negativity and when they hear negativity you know they're grasping on it especially if it's a uh, 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 something or somebody that they disagree with and we have a lot of our folks that are like ha 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 you voted for the democrats look at this trying to have this you gotcha know your moment right and it's like you dumb idiot <laughs> as i digress sorry look, look, you don't uh, see the republicans aren't voting for anything huh <laughs> let's, let's go back to uh, the 2016 election okay yes sir uh senate inquiry uh had concluded that a russian fake news campaign Target. They targeted no single group more than who? Black people. More than African Americans. It said that the Russian operatives used social media to deter black people from voting and planted subtle racist content to incite conflict between ethnicities. All right. Report comes two years in. It came two years into the Senate Intel's Committee investigation into the 2016 election. All right. They've been doing this. Yeah. All right, more than 66% of Facebook advert posted by the Russian troll farm contained a term related to race. Who does the Russians work with? Who do they, who do they work hand in hand with? Republicans, Trump. Who's getting the most money from them? GOP. Like, we look at the, the National Rifle Association that you know, they partner with the GOP hand in hand. They have a whole organization going over in uh, Russia right now. You think Russians are allowed to carry weapons? I don't know. No, not at all. All right, so these things are these these things are happening. Oh my goodness! Look, they've been targeting us. It's been going on for years, like since way back when. All right, um, the way it was done, and the Oxford study that concluded all this stuff, it captured several pictures of Facebook and Instagram posts, which that said it was created by Russians. They were told to avoid racial slurs, but still post racist content in order to evade the attention of social media monitors and to not have their ads taken down. All right, so they, they'd have ones up with, like, uh, Calamity Sam with a gun that says, if you grew up watching me on television and have a gun and haven't shot or killed anyone, vote for me. I was banned from TV for being too violent. Then it has, like, a Confederate flag behind him trying to get you to support their kind of power, their kind of movement. Yeah. Oh, you like your guns? Oh, you like Calamity Sam? I did, too. Come on, vote for me. And it's working. You know, it's, it's, it's like uh, when someone gets happy, you know. It's like... Hey, you want a job? You got a job. You got a job. You got a job. Oh, you got a mom? I got a mom, too. You get a job. Like, these kind of things like that, and that's where they plan, or don't vote. Your vote don't matter. Uh, Sai says, yo, heavy. There's mad disinformation uh, spread through WhatsApp. I hear my pops watching videos in Spanish and hella twisted. There was an, arti uh, an article video out talking about how WhatsApp is not policed 
uh, like Facebook. Dante, good morning to you. And Rebecca says, isn't this the same thing we gave people crap about for COVID, doing their own research? There used to be a time when we could trust the news outlet for truth reporting versus bias reporting. And then Jen says, how about the Russian operative who infiltrated the NRA? Oh, my gosh. Fact, she was sleeping with the politicians and everything. Like, it was, it was a whole big thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Lady L. So, I, I think that this is... It's something that we need to be aware of. And, you know, the more you know. So the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, did a report on Russia air interference in the state so that no single group of Americans was targeted by IRA information operatives more than African Americans. By far, race and related issues were the preferred target of the information warfare campaign designed to divide the country back in 2016. Um, so here's the thing, the tactics used by disinformation agents, including posing as black influencers on social media and targeting black and Latino voters on Facebook and Twitter with the message, uh, yeah, uh, with the message text, uh, Hillary, uh, they did like this texting thread um, at that time and they were doing that to actually target black people and then you would send them your number, respond, and boom, now they got you. And now they can send you more disinformation through your multiple platforms. Just want, um, just want all of our um, people to know that, like, the, the the reason why we're being targeted is because there's there there's so much strength and power uh, within within our numbers within our communities. That's why there's there's so much energy to to splinter it. That's why there's so much. Uh, um, uh, legislation uh, to, to to break up our neighborhoods and our communities. Like it's it's a game of thrones. It's a game of power. If you if you destabilize this this, this said power, you destabilize this said voting base. Then 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 those that you know that 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 don't agree with the policies um, um, or that don't support said group they're able to still get voted in. That's why again and again and again and again and again, we see these voter suppression efforts because our vote, our vote really matters and our vote moves mountains in this country. Can't give it up so easily, folks. Can't give it up so easily, you know. Um, uh, so before we get to um, um, our, our fourth story, our TurboTax story, uh, Sarge, if anything, else to add i did not i did not i'm 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 satisfied i deem satisfied with the information that we put out all right and i hope you all do too all right well well we do have some uh, more information to uh put out lady l can you tell people about busy bodies cafe uh gladly so listen busy bodies cafe is an interactive play gym uh it's an interactive play gym for our littlest ones, ages one to six years old. But I trust me, you can take your infant there as well, as long as they're crawling around. Yes, but Busy Bodies Play Cafe is now open at Rockville Outlets. Listen, go on ahead and schedule a visit. They have music days. They have uh, other days where visitors come in and entertain the children. And not just that, but mark your calendars. Because on May 23rd, on Monday, May 23rd, they will be having a high, uh, ice cream social. So bring the whole family out to Busy Bodies Play Cafe. Get to meet the owners and enjoy yourselves at Busy Bodies. Play Cafe now open at the shops at Rockville. All right, so um, folks, our fourth story of the day. We are cooking with gas here this morning. Um, our fourth story of the day is uh, TurboTax company to pay 141 million dollars in a settlement over ads promising free filing. So this comes from uh, the New York Associated Press. The company behind TurboTax filing program will pay 141 to customers across the United States who were deceived by misleading promises of free tax filing. New York's Attorney General announced on Wednesday, under the terms of a settlement signed by the Attorneys General of all 50 states, Mountain View, California, based uh, Intuit, Inc., will suspend TurboTax free, free, free ad campaign and pay restitution to nearly 4.4 million taxpayers. James said her investigation into Intuit was sparked by a 2019 ProPublica report that found the company was using deceptive tactics 
to steer low-income tax filers away from the federally supported free services for which they qualified and toward its own commercial products instead. For years, Intuit misled the most vulnerable among us to make a profit. Today, every state in the nation is holding Intuit accountable for scamming millions of taxpayers and we're putting millions of dollars back into the pockets of impacted Americans. This agreement should serve as a reminder to companies large and small that emerge that engaging in these deceptive marketing ploys is illegal. A message seeking comment uh, was left with Intuit. Intuit has offered two free versions of TurboTax. One was through its participation in the IRS services free file program geared towards taxpayers earning roughly $34,000 and members of the military. Intuit, however, withdrew from the program in July of 2021. The company also offers a commercial product called TurboTax Free Edition that is only for taxpayers with simple returns as defined by Intuit. According to documents obtained by ProPublica, Intuit executives knew they were deceiving customers by advertising free services that were not, in fact, free to everyone. The website lists free, 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 and the customers are assuming the return will be free. Customers are getting upset. Under the agreement, Intuit will provide restitution to customers, to consumers who started using their commercial turbo tax free edition for tax years 2016 through 2018 and were told they had to pay to file even though they were eligible for the version of turbo tax offered as part of the free IRS program. Consumers are expected to receive a direct payment of approximately $30 for each year they were deceived into paying for filing services. They will automatically receive notices and checks by mail. So, y'all going to get your, uh, what, 2016 to 2018. So, y'all going to get your $60. $90. In the mail. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know why what? they didn't go back further. Like, why did you only do 2016 to 2018? Like, TurboTax has been pushing that free commercial since at least 2000. Mm -hmm. Taking over for the 2000 and the 99. That was TurboTax. Mm -hmm. So, and it, well, you know what, though? They only really did it because there was a report. ProPublica did a report. That's yep. the only reason why they. So, I mean, but there's more money that they need to be uh, reissuing to folks. That's all I'm saying. I mean, and so, th th this is why journalism matters, uh, 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 folks, yeah. um, uh, be be because without this report, they're not going to say, oh, yeah, we screwed y'all. Let's pay y'all back. No, this started with journalism. Then it went to courts then it went into legislation. And then now you see what happens. Rinse, wash, repeat. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So, look, TurboTax has been they've been screaming this free thing. They've been offering limited or free federal online inc online tax preparation, tax preparation and e-file. Uh, for those who adjusted gross income is twenty eight thousand to twenty eight thousand five hundred or less, or fifty two thousand for those in the military and those fifty or under. All right, they they were doing this version. It require if it requires you to if it requires them to put any tax data in for you, they're going to charge. Yep. All right. So on average, on an average, they were people who filed with TurboTax paid an average of one hundred and seventy dollars. Thirty dollars doesn't do it. Nope. I'm sorry, thirty dollars doesn't do it. I'm sure TurboTax has made what more than enough money over the years. Yep. They can aren't there laws? They, they aren't there laws against? Uh, are there laws against uh, false advertising? And and why aren't they like more punitive on the advertiser? It seems like this is a very small drop in the bucket yep. for something that really manipulated a lot of people out of a lot of money. Yep. No. So the uh, the way that, from my understanding, especially with talking with accountants. The government is not concerned about people with millions and billions of dollars in their account because they have the money to take it to court. Okay. They got the money to take it to court. You got the money to take the government to court? I ain't got the money to take nah, the government I, to court. So they're going to come for us. Right. They're not really coming for into it. That's why they're not pushing it. That's why they're... Charge, you just said what? They owe these people about $170? They're per, gonna, per, year. per year. Per year. Per year. Right. They're only going to get $30 for each of those years. Like, are you... And the business is allowed to continue year. to exist, though. You know what I mean? Like they've they've had this practice for how long, and the company's allowed to exist. But anyway. what? But what does that show you? What the government believes about it? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. this is our government. Yep. The legislators they have to hear this. Congress has to hear this, and they said, "Oh, give the American people that's what they deserve." 
the people that y'all voted for, yep, that's what they said. And they're making into it, give y'all $30 a year that y'all, like, come on. Come on, y'all. This is the bank bailout all over again. All over again. People, gentlemen. <sighs> Well, um, uh, for 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 TurboTax, um, um, uh, uh, again, it's it's not so much about um, the 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 payout, you know, um, be, because if we look at past payouts, like we did we did a story on on payouts and how the um, payouts look differently when you're dealing with certain races, how the payouts look differently when you're dealing with certain economic statuses. So you can assume here that that the payout is is going to be small because you're dealing with low income people. I'm I, I'm more specifically looking at that that like you're you're going to get your money. Um, um, one, I, I, I'm asking how because if people have moved like I, i'm looking at from from 2016 i was living in philadelphia and my 2016 on um, taxes are from 2015 and 2015 i was living in new jersey so like what what address are you going to be using you know uh, uh and and then then i look at this is more so tongue-in-cheek but then i look at the um story of Yesterday, um, with all that unclaimed property and, and, and that unclaimed money, and it's like you had to reach out and find out for yourself versus uh, uh, this. They're like, whoa, don't reach out. We're going to send you your $30. Like, it, it's, just, it's just really funny to see, like, like um, with this situation, they're actively going out and giving the money to people versus yesterday's story. They're like, no, come to us, and, and then we'll give it to you. Look, um, you know, 104 million people, 104 million taxpayers are eligible for a free for a free file last year. 100, 104 million of those, just 2.4 percent actually used a free government program. Of the remaining 101.5 million, this is just last year, folks. 67 million did not use tax software. They just went to the brick and mortar tax prep services. The remaining 34.5 million used software to do their taxes, and of those. 14 million paid for tax prep they could have received for free. To arrive at the number, the Inspector General conducted a survey deemed statistically valid of 200 taxpayers who qualified for free file but used a commercial online. All right, so this company, Inuit, in the public filings, they said they make an average of $62 per return. But the figure incorporates many people who file for free. So the average revenue for each paying customer is significantly higher. And uh, you know, TurboTax generated $1.6 billion in operating income in just last year. I'm in the wrong business. Definitely in the wrong business. How? <laughs> but yeah, that's that. Uh, sister girl, you need to call me so we can get you some space and set you up with your own accounting firm. Yeah, free file. Free file. Do this. <laughs> Man, that's yeah. yeah I, that. I think this is really interesting, especially since this is essentially like some kind of like a class action suit type situation where the company is in trouble. And anybody that we can find that have worked with this company in this time frame, we're going to reach out to you. And that's, that's pretty much essentially what they're going to be doing. And yes, like my handsome husband co-host has said, they're going to be looking at the previous documents that you've sent to them. And they're going to go off of that and send you your $30 per year check that you have filed with TurboTax. Which is crazy. Even though technically you're due about $170 for each year that you file with them. Like... They're still not giving the people their money back. And, and it's and and it's and it's just it's 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 one of those things that it's like y'all falsely advertise, do something. Do something. And and this is this is this is that do something. And and this 141 million dollars, yes, that looks like a big number. Oh my gosh, they're paying out 141 million dollars. Oh, they really got them, but but again, Sarge, that number was um, one point eight billion billion in in just what in just this year? Yeah, it's just this past, just this past year. One point. What's one hundred forty? Hey, free math gurus. One hundred eight billion minus one forty one. One hundred forty one million. That's it, huge. They still have that's a lot. Still over a billion yeah. dollars. Oh, they're still making a lot of profit <laughs> off of that. Still. Oh, so still. it's like it's like having a hundred dollars and giving somebody a dollar. And it's like, where is the punishment for that? Like for profit cents. for profiteering off of the people. Right. Nothing. I mean, they're still like, in business. 
Right. They're still like, paying politicians there's, there's, off. There's nothing that anyone does to them. They just kind of get away with it to, to figure out the next way to take money from people. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, Ridiculous, man. Lady up before we get to our, our next story. Uh, I'm good on this story. I just think that we have to just continue to be mindful about the resources that are offered to us across our communities. For those of us who don't like to do the free filing, I don't blame you. There were, for me personally, us being in Philadelphia, there were just too many young people that didn't have things that were filing my taxes. And I was like, how are you, what qualifies you to do this? I feel like I was missing money. And that was just kind of where I was at. I was like, yeah, this don't work because I'm missing money, right? And then once I got married, we really didn't get any tax money until we started going to a private tax preparer. So, yeah, it's different for everybody. But listen, you you got to check your finances, have conversations with anybody that's filing your taxes just so that you can be more aware and you can be more comfortable with this process. Right. Like, that's all I'm saying, because we clearly see that TurboTax into it. And these larger organizations are really going to mishandle us, misuse us and apparently steal from us with no repercussions or accountability at all. Other than dishing out one hundred and forty one million dollars. But again, think about how many people are getting that thirty dollar check. That, that, that's millions, hundreds of thousands of American citizens getting that thirty to ninety dollar check. That's why it's one hundred and forty one million because of the number of individuals that they have to give money back to. And I think that they, they need to hit individuals like like if you're the CEO, then then the, the, there should be some kind of penalty that you should pay as as well because like this this right here, okay, they had to pay one hundred forty one million dollars okay whatever that's fine that's like you lying as a person and then having to pay 14 dollars for your fine <laughs> like it's not it's not no not no big deal how how you know? is that real yeah. people show up in court all the time and have these ridiculous things happen when they show up i'm just confused about why the ridiculousness didn't hit TurboTax. TurboTax made in 2020 they made 208 billion 200.08 billion. All right, so they have been making money. They're not they're a powerhouse. Yeah. They're, they're I'm sure they're putting money into somebody's pockets. And the they courts. are a powerhouse and there's like, what's 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 to stop them? Right? Like we 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 talk about our politicians and we're talking about oh they're bought they're bought they're bought they're bought they're bought they get money from um uh, um these lobbying groups and what have you. But the judges same thing. Yeah. Same, same, same thing. Like, same, same exact thing. Um, and the judges, they're not under as much scrutiny. They're not under this, uh, this, this magnifying glass like our politicians are. That's how you have these judges work three days a week and they're bringing in a quarter million dollars a year as a salary. That's not talking about gifts and, and special events and, and speaking engagements and so forth. Um, uh, there's, there, there's one judge, you know, I'm not going to say any names, but there, it was one judge, Lancaster, who was getting paid $15,000 for each speaking event. Like, I wish I want to get paid that much. <laughs> you know, um, um, to get to the comment section, um, Rebecca says, I, I thought the same thing. How are they going to know where to send the money? And that 30 to $60, that's not going to help most people versus the 170 to $340 they spent for the two years they had to pay to file when it should have been free. The thing is, most people who have been with TurboTax have been following with them for years. Yep. Way you know, before. Like, think about it. It was before. Yeah. Like, this, you know, this into it, like, 141 million people, they have a 6.6, .6, they reported a 6.6 .6 billion dollar revenue, revenue stream coming in. Yeah. Like, this is the money that they have coming in with combined revenue at 141 million? Like, and where, I don't, who got I don't, paid the rest of the money from this? Who got paid the other 241 million? Right. Uh, somebody got a Christmas bonus. <laughs> somebody got a, but I... I What's interesting, though, is that, right, like, people people use this service, and, and I'll say that because we've used TurboTax before, and I, I love it because, for me, it was, oh, I can log right back in when somebody be like, oh, we need your tax information from this year. I don't know where that stuff is at. Oh, right. Let me log into TurboTax, right? I can't get that if I go to the IRS random preparers on Jenkintown Pike. 
I can't get this if I go to the random IRS setup at the local high school. I'm not going to get that. And that also plays a part in that. So if the government is saying, hey, we're offering you free tax services, how are you offering the long-term support of that? Right? Because now I got to use those taxes for the next year, possibly two years, and all I have is the original filing that you gave me that one time up 10 years ago that I'm holding on to. This is how we got people with bankers boxes full of old taxes. Right. Just holding on to stuff. Again, the government, how can you say, I'm here for you, I'm going to do these things for you, and you don't even know how to work the computer? <laughs> Go out there and vote. Listen, if you can't work a computer, you shouldn't be out here running for office. That's just where I'm at with it. Because y'all should have seen how they were treating the owners of Meta when they had to come and, and talk to Congress and how Congress couldn't understand how the Internet works. Gentlemen. Um. Corinne says, uh, hence why I paid the fees for years, Lady L. And then um, Rebecca says, uh, make, make the CEO and board members personally call and apologize for being greedy jerks. And then uh, Candace says, it's about time they got penalized for misinformation and they should be dishing out more than 30 bucks. Isn't even hitting the surface of what uh, they should reimburse their victims. They should pay back the full amount in addition to the inconvenience right. it may have caused. What about yeah. the, what about the quality of tax preparation too? Like, how much money do people lose out because they're bad at their jobs? You right. know what I mean, like, because right. the algorithm is bad. Right. Just. And then, then, then I'm thinking, how many people, how many people go to go to a tax preparer, you know, and the tax preparer uses TurboTax <laughs> and then ties in. You know, that TurboTax charge into what yo, they charge. Yo. <laughs> so, oh, look, I didn't even think of it that deep. Like, oh, wow. there, there, there are people that will charge you that'll charge $150 to type in your information into TurboTax's mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. And then be like, hey, you're good. Yep. Yep. And TurboTax still takes their money, but. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. We were, we prepared our own taxes for years on TurboTax. Got real comfortable. I was like, oh, this is a piece of cake. <laughs> yep, yep. And that's how they get you, right? Like it's the ease of it as well. Exactly. Um, uh, Gary says, "Good morning." Uh, but the payback is karma. That rich executive kid who dies from seventy nine uh, cent fentanyl overdose. Jesus. Uh, Gary. Stop stealing from people <laughs> and take care of your children. Gary, too deep. <laughs> Would not expect anything less. Right. Deep, Uncle, Gary. <laughs> deep. Uncle Gary got the Ginsu knot. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep okay. them okay. nice. It's okay. okay. Don't worry. Their kid will die. <laughs> if, you, if you stay petty, you yeah, never have to get, get petty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gary. Yeah, Appreciate that is, you, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so again, um, uh, again, folks, um, uh, TurboTax yeah. uh, will be paying uh, since... On the dollar, uh, back to those that they took advantage of. Uh, Corinne says, I pay 200 plus when I used H and R. Yeah, H and R Block, need, block. they need to investigate it too, dang it. Yeah. Because yeah. I done paid them a lot of money over the years. Yeah. But H and R Block doesn't promise free. But what H and R Block does do is that they give you your money up front and then you pay them back when your taxes come in. You can pay me now <laughs> or. Yeah. I can just take it all out later. But I feel yeah. like there's something with that because there's some real payday loany about that H and R block situation that never sat well with me. Like that is so. You true. got all. You can just give me my tax money right well, now, well, and I pay you back when the actual think, taxes come back. Think about it, Lady L. Like, like Sarge uh, again. How much did um um TurboTax bring in? Uh, uh one point eight. On revenue, yeah, one point six billion last year. One point six billion. So, 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 yes. Typically, typically, you know, Lady L, who who wants their money up front? It's typically lower income folks, broke people. So, so, I yes, say that out loud. yes, <laughs> out of out, out of That's that one point six million, they can they can front, you know, six mil. Like they right. can front you out know, of one point six billion. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, they can front that ten. 10 million, yeah. We'll front this 10 million and we'll get it back. But what we've done, we've 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 made a customer for life because that person is going to keep on coming back and they're going to keep on putting Cause, into cause that money is that, good. That 1.6 billion. They're going to keep on year. putting into that and then they're going to tell their folks, "Yo, you I got go my down money early, same day or yeah, 3 days." So then now 
Year one, you had that one family. Year two, you got that one family and their two neighbors. Year three, you got the block. So they're, they're, they're coming out great because they're growing their customer base. I'm pretty sure there's some level of insidiousness because I'm yeah, making it no. sound too good. Yo. <laughs> right, it, but, no and the more I hear you talk about it, the more it's like, oh, they just... First of all, because they're not, making, it, exactly. they're not making any money as we see it right now, which is why I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, there, So there has to be some kind of way that H&R Block is making that money back, especially at an interest. You're right. paying You're paying for your taxes. You are You are paying your, your $99 yeah. for all your taxes. And you're paying for your, you're paying for state and you're paying for federal. And, and, and again, the, the, this whole, you know, we start with one person and then one person turns to three, three turns into seven, seven turns into 14. Now, they may have started just getting $99 from that one person, but after year three, you have 14 people, $99 per, per, per person. Like that's not, a, that's not a bad week. Right. <laughs> right. That's not a and bad those week. customers are going to keep coming. Right. Because of the convenience, because of the advantage, because exactly. of, the, of the luxury of getting your money early. Exactly. And, and because and, you need it. And right. Right. And, and if I'm in a jam, yes, I'm going to H&R Block. Every time I'm even going to prepare for it because in December I'm going to be like, let me make my appointment for H and R Block <laughs> so that I can have my money in January. And then you know they did all the crazy stuff, right? You didn't have to wait till you got your W two. You could take your last year's the last pay stub of last year in at the beginning of the year. You don't have to wait till the end of January. Yeah. They made a whole lot of like con- uh, concessions to make it easier to give you your money so that you can pay them. Yeah, it, it, you know it's it's yeah. Yeah, there it is. So, um, so, uh, uh, folks, we're going to uh, get to our next uh, uh, topic here. Um, uh, but, but first, Rebecca says, I'm sure you are paying 4 to 12 percent convenience interest. And Sabrina says it all goes back to uh, it's expensive. Um, Gary says, I'm keeping it real. I was just reading about San Diego County Sheriff's Department, uh, rich executive kids dying from fentanyl drug overdoses. Sheesh. Gary says in his uh, best uh, Drago voice. If he dies, he dies. He dies. <laughs> All right, so let's get to uh, our our next story. Um, our fifth story of the day. Uh, going right. back to uh, the hot button uh, issue of of this week, which has been abortion. So, Sarge. All right. So, uh, we talked to our Governor Wolf. Talked about hey, abortions gonna will stay legal here in PA. Well. <laughs> PA already has some abortion restrictions. Yeah, man. But a new governor and general assembly could change that. So the final U.S. Supreme Court on a key abortion case is not due until later this year. Both state leaders and primary candidates for governor have made clear how they would pursue state policy changes should justices jettison the, ru- jettison the ruling. Pennsylvania abortion laws remain in place if the court votes to overturn its decision in Roe v. Wade. A leaked draft of a forthcoming opinion that was confirmed by Chief Justice John Roberts appears to show a court willing to toss the decades-old ruling. Justice Samuel Alito opened that the Roe decision was erroneously wrong, erroneously wrong from the start and that states ought to be able to expand or restrict abortion access however they see fit. Even with Roe in place, Pennsylvania is among the states that have regulated abortion on their own. Under its decade-old Abortion Control Act, pregnant women in the Keystone State have to consult with a doctor at least 24 hours before an abortion, and minors have to obtain a parent's permission. Standard health insurance can only pay for abortions after a sexual assault, incest, or to protect a pregnant person's life. Though Pennsylvanians can buy extra coverage for the procedure, those three conditions are the only ones under which pregnant women who are 24 weeks or longer into their pregnancies can obtain an abortion. All Republican primary candidates for governor say they support abortion restrictions, including some, like leading candidate and state senator Doug Mastrano, who would make no exception. Mastrano noted in a televised debate that he introduced legislation several years ago banning the procedure after six weeks of pregnancy and would push lawmakers to move with speed to pass such legislation if elected. You guys hear that? Mastrano. Remember that. Mastriano. Mastriano. Doug Mastriano introduced legislation that would that would ban the procedure after six weeks of pregnancy. Six weeks of pregnancy. Wit. Yes. How soon do women know? Do all women know that they're pregnant after six weeks? No. 
Okay, so there's a whole show on Discovery Channel that I love to watch that's called I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant. So, six weeks. Way to go, Maestriano. So, Governor Todd Wolf and his potential Democratic successor, John Shapiro, both have said they would veto new abortion restrictions. Republican lawmakers, meanwhile, remain steadfast in their support for limiting abortion. We're for legislation that protects the dignity of human life throughout all stages, and our legislation agenda has reflected that. House Republican spokesman John Gottsman said. The House already approved the bill with some Democratic support that would ban abortion if a fetus is diagnosed with Down syndrome. Another bill in the Senate that had been shelved until a few weeks ago would cut state funding for health care providers that perform abortions. Another that stalled in that chamber would cut any right to abortion or funding for an abortion out of a Pennsylvania Constitution. Gottsman said it's too soon to not share what House Republicans might do next if the Roe decision is overturned. He did not confirm or share specifics about a post-Roe strategic summit meeting that a Democrat state senator alleges recently took place in the House conference room. By the time there's another, another governor, there will be a new General Assembly, so we're going to be continuing to look at what's in front of us now and then deal with what tomorrow. So Senate Republican President and gubernator national candidate Jake Corman took a similar stance, saying he at least supports Pennsylvania's current abortion law. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off there. The Republicans in Pennsylvania, the legislators, the Republican legislators, you guys are worried about the wrong things. You're worried about the wrong things. And the only reason you, you guys are in power is due to some... Yeah, some being tricky with that pen, you know, that gerrymandering. I was gonna say gerrymandering. That's the only reason you guys are in office. And and well, yeah, and, and having the Russians help to keep the black the black voice, the black and uh, brown vote. Yeah. You know, you, you've had all these things play into you, play into your your will, your game. You know, but no, no more. No more like for the amount of people that showed up for the insurrection because they deemed they were cheated. Imagine if every single person that you guys are cheating now, that you guys have been cheating, you know, would rise up and show up at your house, show up wherever you guys are at, show up at Harrisburg, you know, with, with weapons, you know, like, like small, small, small people from your party did, the small group of people. Imagine if the masses that you continue to try to give no voice to would do that to you. It'd be a change. There, there would be a huge change. Oh. Absolutely. If there was, if if like um uh, like those um uh those the, those gun enthusiasts uh that like to walk around the Capitol with their guns, which I still don't understand how that was even legal, possible, or whatever. But like, yeah, if it was um um a bunch of brothers um um carrying 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 large large rifles and everything like that, yes. Yes, yes. State troopers would be pulled up. Yo. SWAT, everybody be sitting in the parking lot. National Guard getting called in. January 6th would not look like January 6th. And and and, and talking about that, um, um, there's there there's somebody on uh, that just won their uh GOP primary um uh, as a um QAnon enthusiast and, and was a uh, January 6th rally participant. Uh they just won um uh, uh beat 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 a long standing um, um, beat beat a long-standing um, GOP -er. so this, this this is going to get interesting because now we're seeing these um, these 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 openly January 6 supporters I'll, I'll put it like that um, get into office got call them terrorists bro terrorists well yeah <laughs> I call them terrorists bro that's an even better word <laughs> I I love it I love it um, um but uh let's uh, uh get um Lady L in here um, uh, again, once again talking about um, Pennsylvania and abortions. Oh, the handmaid's tale! The handmaid's tale is coming, y'all. It's coming. So listen, in this article, uh, the House has already. This is in Pennsylvania, y'all. The House has already approved a bill with some Democratic support that would ban abortions if a fetus is diagnosed with Down syndrome. That did. Yeah. So you can, um, so there's actually a thing now where about 20 something, some odd weeks, you can do a fetal diagnostic test. They take a needle, they take out some uh, placenta, whatever they're taking out, and they test the baby for any potential uh, birth defects or diseases that the child can have when they're born. 
you don't have to do this test. It is offered to you. Um, I know I got offered it at Abington Memorial, and I opted to not take it because I just didn't think it was necessary. I, in, in my mind, I was like, oh, I got a good uterus. We all good over here. So I didn't, I didn't opt for it. But there are women who are maybe a little bit older or have had some complications in the past. They do opt for these tests. And this bill is essentially saying if you, if you take that test and it says, you know, your baby may have Down syndrome, and at that point, a mom is like, you know what, I don't know if I want to have this baby. Essentially, now they have taken that right away from that mom. So now she will be forced to carry that pregnancy to term and to have a baby and now to parent that child. Now listen, let me tell you about some of these other laws because none of them come with any financial allocations to help support these families. The next bill um, that, that's coming down the pipeline would cut state funding for healthcare providers that perform abortions. So you know who they're coming for directly with that one, Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood performs abortions. They're gonna take away some money from that. And then the other healthcare facilities that do abortions as well. Something else that they're talking about is uh, cutting any right to abortion or funding for an abortion out of Pennsylvania's Constitution. This is what they're working on. So now not only are you going to force me to have a baby that, that may have severe birth defects and other things, you're not going to give me any money to help, and then you're going to take funding away from the healthcare institutions that could help women. Make it make sense. Welcome to the Handmaid's Tale America. Um, on the article, um, uh, even says, even with Roe um, in, in place, Pennsylvania is among the states that have regulated abortion on their own. Under its decades-old Abortion Control Act, pregnant women in the Keystone State have to consult with a doctor at least 24 hours before an abortion, and minors have to obtain a parent's permission. Uh, standard health insurance can only pay for abortions after sexual assault, incest, or to protect a pregnant person's life, though Pennsylvanians can buy extra coverage for the procedure. Uh, those three conditions are the only ones under which pregnant women who are under 20 weeks or longer into their pregnancy can obtain an abortion. All Republican primary candidates for governor say they support abortion restrictions, including some like leading candidate and state senator Doug Mastriano, who would make no exceptions. Um, uh, so, um, uh, folks, folks, uh, again, uh, under its decade, decades-old Abortion Control Act, pregnant women in the Keystone State have to consult with a doctor at least 24 hours before an abortion, and minors uh, have to obtain a parent's, um, uh, a parent's permission. So... Um, some of these restrictions, they are already in place. So it, it, just, it, just waiting for Roe to get overturned. Listen, right. Women, what are you voting with? You voting with your, your pocketbook or your uterus? Yo, women that are married to these people voting for this, you, these Republicans. Yo, these, these people that Yo, are running this, this legislation. Is, this is ridiculous Yo. to hear Yo, all this stuff. Close up for them. Close up. Lock up. <laughs> Like Go on strike. Like shy rat. Yeah, yo, cut shut off, down. Cut, cut off the flow to the coochie. Yeah, shut down. <laughs> Look, at, talk to the neighborhood. The neighborhood, uh, you know, the, the thoughts. Talk to all the thoughts around the block. You know, the little get down mellies, whatever you want to call them, the bust them downs. Like, come up with something. Like, show them that your voice does matter. Like, your your body is your body. Going to sex. Like strike. a woman's body is a woman's body. Like I don't I don't get it. I don't understand how, why they well, can even think like this. Be, 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 because this this, this this won't affect them. Uh, uh, like like um 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 people were saying yesterday. Like the, the women that come from the haves, they're going to get their abortions. They're going to be able to get their. They'll fly to Canada. Uh, right, and right, right. Get whatever they need. Take that three right. months off and then yeah, come back home. And they'll be just fine. I'm, I'm, I'm more so looking at like, all right, well, if, if, if these, if these states are going to go against federal law, you know, then, then why can't, why can't this same energy? The same kind of mindset be done when dealing with uh, marijuana. 
you know, when dealing with cannabis. Like, why can't there be, like, in some instances, this is this whole, you know, recreational uh, um, cannabis thing, but those places still can't bank federally. Right. You know, so, so if, if we're going to have this, oh, leave it up to the states when it comes to abortion, and, and said abortion doesn't really bring in any revenue to the state, why wouldn't then that same energy, that same mindset be focused on to um, um, cannabis and leave it up to the states and, and not have this whole, oh, well, it's federal, it's federal, it's federal. It's, it's a pick and choose type it, of thing. While they that still is always under discretion. Yeah. And argue about smaller government, and yet the federal government has decided what drugs are illegal instead of allowing the states to just figure it out. Right. Let's... You, you, all right, so people want to. Where does this abortion thing come from? All right, where does it come from? I'll tell you right now. It's 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 based on white fear of geni- of g- genetic annihilation. That's what fuels it. That, oh, that's what yeah, fuels yeah. it. All right, no, so look, the, the so white, abortions are the, the more white, so about yeah. making sure that white women. Yes, can yeah, yes, yes, that's the, what it is. So look, the, white, the white birth rate it has been down for what like the past oh, like listen, six look, years or something like that. Look, it's, it's, I, I can see quiet storms basically looking like it's what is the white theories. supremacy? Are these guys about no, no, to go this, down? Is, this is real. But it's real. All right, listen, this is real. All right, so, this, this is real. All right, we're going to talk about So white people constitute 60% of the U.S. population, down from about 90% in 1950. And it said it's, it said it's projected by 2050 there will be a new minority, and people of color will be the majority. So Le- Senator Lindsey Graham, mm-hmm. all right, so he voiced the concern of demographic dilution. Or at the twenty at the twenty twelve Republican convention when he said the demographic race we're losing badly. Republicans are not generating enough angry white guys to stay in business for long term. His comments relay what social scientists and anti racism racism activists activists call white extinction anxiety or fear of white genetic annihilation. And that's the idea that white people could go the way of the dinosaur. You know, as much as you people don't want to believe me or you think I'm talking out of, out of but this is, this is what our, our senators believe. This is how these, these old, these people that were born in the 1950s that are around during that. You know, that scene when, oh, America was great, when it was 90% white population. That's when America was great again. That's what they want to go back to. Because you don't hear, let's go back to the 1960s. It's always what? The 1950s. The 1950s Before when the population, action. exactly. When the population was 90% white. All right, so don't give me, oh, I like that old 1950s. No, you you like the population being majority of white. That's what you like. The 60% makes you feel uncomfortable. And that's why we're seeing all these things against abortion. Don't tell me it's religion. Like, don't don't, don't tell me that. All right, and don't tell me. Like, I don't see any funding going to help kids with Down syndrome. None. But yet you're taking away you're taking right. away that right for moms to even be able to. Nope, you're gonna have to stick with this kid. We haven't made orphanages better. Exactly. We haven't made adoption easier. We haven't. We've done all this pro life talk. Well, we changed the name. They're not orphanages Yo, anymore. Now they're that, they're they're foster homes and resource homes. That part, all this pro life talk in Texas. In Texas, five senators introduced a bill that if you get an abortion, you qualify for the death penalty. So they're so they're so pro life, so pro life. They're willing to kill somebody who, who don't want to give birth. And that's where we are. That's where we're. That's at. where we've gotten to. <laughs> so pro oh, life. You want You don't want to give birth. We're gonna kill, kill you. you. Yes. Yes. And that's that. That's a fact. That is a fact, folks. Look it up, book it, and read it. That is a fact. Because when I read that, I was like, how? Like this. This. this again. New America, like we were, like we talk about Bible yesterday. Belt, religious people. Yes, we, this is where we're going with our religious zealot. I yes. don't even know what you call it, like it, our religiousness, our our conviction to our religion. Zealots. This that's, is where we're going. Come that, on, that's exactly what it is. This is this is the equivalent to those guys on the Game of Thrones that put the cross in their head. Like <laughs> that's where we're going. That's so, where where we're going. But I, go ahead. It's, uh, I was going to say, um, it, when you guys get to the comments, uh, we're going to have to have these roles put out there of what these people are on Handmaid's Tale. Because a lot of women <laughs> in the comments are like, I hope I'm this. I hope I'm that. Watch, yeah. um, so if you have not watched The Handmaid's Tale, those of you that have watched, you're, you're putting in the uh, chat what you want to be in this new Gilead. 
Do you want to be a Martha? Do you think you're going to be a handmaid? Unfortunately, I always talk about my uterus. I even have it on the computer. I have a vagina on my computer. So I'm unfortunately going to probably end up a handmaiden. But let us know uh, your thoughts down in the comments. Are you a Martha, an aunt, a handmaid in this new Gilead? Maybe you're a wife. Look, I do want to say, look, hyperpunitive abortion legislation recently passed in Alabama. It bans the procedure outright and accepting cases to the risk of a woman's health. In Georgia, a woman who obtains an abortion will spend the rest of her life in prison. All right, so of these 212 lawmakers in Alabama and Georgia whose votes ushered in the most restrictive abortion laws we've seen yet, how many do you think are what? I'm just keep, like, I'm not. How many do you think are what? 211 or what? 200 out of 212 lawmakers that have passed this bill in Alabama and Georgia alone. First of all, 211. I know Georgia and Alabama, looking at their demographics, that I, I know that pool of legislators does not, it does not look like the pool of constituents, the pool of people that live in Alabama and Georgia is not representative of that. But these are the people that are writing the laws, make. Anyway, yeah. Um, to the comment section before we get to um our our next story. Uh, Sabrina says it goes back to being poor. Uh, costs money. Being poor is expensive. Rebecca says I didn't know I was pregnant until eight weeks, and I had uh, surgery two weeks prior. Uh, finding out they checked me with with a blood test, and it didn't show at that point. Uh, Taquan says uh, my mom made it um uh, to. I believe four months before uh, she went to the doctors. Um, Rebecca says, again, ice cream, stay out of my effing uterus. Dig it. Uh, Corinne says, with one of my kids, I didn't even test positive until I was 10 weeks uh, that they going to go after voting rights next. And then says, imagine being a lawmaker and being so worried about women's health rights, but don't tell them they need a background check. To have a gun, <laughs> that part. Uh, Gary says, I believe that this is a distraction from what's about to go down with regards to the insurrection correction. Ooh. Yes. Let's get this insurrection party started right. Get it up on the right <laughs> side. Get it up on the left side. <laughs> get it up. Come on now. Get it up. Let's get this insurrection party started right. Get it up. Come on. Get it on up. Let's Y'all know that's a song. Right? <laughs> yeah. Let's get it uh, right. Uh, uh, Corinne says... Um, Want to force us to give birth, but not give us any assistance because they are trying to dismantle that, too. And Sabrina says, uh, trying to decide whether I'm going uh, to be Martha or an aunt in this new Gilead. And then uh, Corinne says, uh, then how about they make birth control available through all insurances? That part. Um, Sabrina put says, guys on birth control. Right, and, put men on birth control. Um, Sabrina says, Tucker Carlson uh, has been pushing replacement theory for Ever. Uh, Rebecca says, my husband and I, I had a very real convo about this last night. He said this was never really an, an issue that affected him directly. I asked if he had sisters or a daughter, would that change the importance to him? He said it might. I said if he was diagnosed with prostate cancer but wasn't allowed to get it, uh, get it treated because the government said he couldn't, why? That doesn't make sense. Exactly. Uh, Sab uh, uh, Sabrina. Um, uh, Gary says uh, the abortion thing is straight up uh, racist. Research the study that shows 13-year-old girls getting pregnant by 22-year-old white men. Uh, Mrs. Brown, great to see you. Welcome. Uh, this is my uh, sixth grade teacher. Hey, Mrs. Brown. <laughs> oh, yeah. Real quick, there was a uh, teacher appreciation day the other day. Um, I don't know if you guys said it. I, I think, think it's teacher appreciation week, appreciation week this week. This is a whole week then. Yeah, oh, all right, well, all to right. all you teachers out there, oh, we appreciate yes, you. Yes, yes. Uh, I owe some wine and spirit gift cards then, eh? Oh, I don't know. That's <laughs> what I get our, our teachers. I get them wine and spirit gift cards. Of course. Yeah, they're they, they teaching our kids. You're going to need some shots. The, no, they all drink when they get out. <laughs> they all drink when they get done teaching. Well, like when y'all retire from teaching, y'all like, yo, let's just drink. I know that um, um, I know that uh, now these teachers are are probably retired because um, uh, I'm about to snitch on them. Um, uh, but but Hopefully when I worked at um, uh, Price, um, uh, the teachers after school used to uh, um, have a little uh, uh, can of buy in the uh, um, in, in the alleyway uh, uh, across from Price. While I was working at uh, Edward Hand. Mm -hmm. At least three kids found bottles of liquor in adults' desks. Well, I listen. I'm not saying it was what right. What are they doing looking in, in, in the adult desk for? I didn't say everything was going <laughs> up and up. I'm saying what happened. 
I'm not putting no names out there, but it did happen in this in the Edward Hand School, and the day we reported, and nothing happened because I guess people know that everybody got to relax. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, Sabrina said uh, says uh, I I aborted my uterus, um, so I can't be a handmaid, uh, and I had children out of wedlock, uh, so I couldn't be a wife. Um, so, uh, um, uh, folks, we are going to uh, move to. Our our next story, um, something that has a more positive uh, tone tone to it. Uh, so, Lady L, can you take us to our next story, please? Sure can. They dished out $5 million to talk about the Underground Railroad, y'all. I mean, I guess reparations by any other name. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, six years after the Mifflin House, a stop on the Underground Railroad and the site of a Civil War skirmish Face potential demolish, uh, face potential demolition to become a warehouse. Yeah, they were going to tear this down to be a warehouse. Well, the historic property near the Susquehanna River in eastern York County has been saved. The conservation fund purchased the Mifflin House property last week for five and a half million dollars. This amount includes acquisition costs. The environmental nonprofit will serve as a temporary owner until it partners, including the Susquehanna National Heritage Area and Preservation Pennsylvania, can secure the funding pledge for the nearly 88 acre property, which sits just off Route 30 in Hallam Township. Within the next year, the property is expected to be transferred to the National Heritage Area for permanent protection and will become the Susquehanna Discovery Center, a new visitor center that provides public access and offers interpretation and education about the history of the area. The farmhouse will be restored for tourists to learn about how Mifflin family helped to hide enslaved African Americans who were seeking freedom and ferry them across the river on their journey to Philadelphia. To see an at-risk property marked saved is, is a very good day, said Mindy Crawford, Executive Director of the Preservation Pennsylvania. So I think that this is phenomenal and I'm excited and can't wait to visit. So these houses, houses like the Mifflin House are all over Pennsylvania. They're all over Pennsylvania. Um, there's even one in Philadelphia, the Belmont Mansion, right? And these houses are historical treasures. They help connect the dots of the Underground Railroad, right? This is how we've learned that the Underground Railroad actually has its home, its birthplace here in central Pennsylvania, in Columbia, right? And so it's important that, that organizations like the Preservation and the Conservation Societies have enough money to be able to acquire these buildings, the permits for them, and keep that history alive and thriving and going, right? Because a person without knowledge of their history is like a tree without roots. Gentlemen, your thoughts? Um, I, I love this um, be, because for the simple fact that um, this is a, a, a preservation of our history, but more specifically, it's a preservation of our local history. Like, um, um, especially as, as a black person in Lancaster City, Lancaster County, like when you hear about the Underground Railroad and like slavery and, and, and everything like that, like you feel so disconnected um, because the way that they teach about uh, slavery and the history of, of slavery and, and whatnot, they, they really make it like, oh, well, it was a down south thing. And then up here, the blacks just, you know, they were free and frolicked <laughs> in the like, uh, fields and they high-fived white they, people. And they, they very much uh, paint that picture like the Mason-Dixon line isn't right there. And, and, and they make it seem like the Mason-Dixon line was a hard stop. Right, right, like, right. Like, it was a wall and it was like, no, no racism right. like, past like this There was point. an army at this line. Right, right. Like, no, we will not have racism here. Right. Like, I dare you. I right. dare you. And the, the beautiful thing about it is, like, especially with this story, is that, yo, there's a few of these houses in Marietta, like 10 minutes away. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful thing. The sad thing is how many of those houses were sold right. prior to, to people that don't care. Right. You know, the, the, the disintegration of the information. Right. You know what I mean? That, that happened because... Like Lady L said, we didn't take the time to invest in those underground railroad homes or those those houses. Like, there's a house for sale in Marietta right now that has a cave in it that served during the Marietta uh, during the uh, 
Underground Railroad. So. Plus, pl- plus, we also ha- ha- have to look at, like, like e- even during those times, like, it's not like having a house be part of the Underground Railroad was a badge of honor. Right. Like, so, so that had to be undercover and everything like that. And, and then when you sell, sell the house, and let's say that it stays within the family. Not everybody, even within the families were 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 right. with the underground railroad movement and, and everything like that like people went to jail for housing slaves and, and helping out with the underground railroad so so i i mean um um uh, again i i i love it because my mom she was the type of person that would always take me to um these kind of uh historical uh things and to know that we have this 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 rich historical uh, um uh black history here in central Pennsylvania, yes, yes, I love it. You want to say, Sarge? Um, I do want to say that. Uh, so, the first United States that was conducted in 1790 recorded 347 slaves in the county of Lancaster and 16 free persons of color. Uh, the number steadily declined, except for an odd bump in the 1830s until 1840, when the census recorded only two slaves and 3,003 free persons of color. All right, so 1840. That's not too crazy long ago. Right. You know, I'm sure there's still two generations, like generate two generations in between there, but uh, they're still around. Yeah, you know, and uh, they're still kind of some of them are still the powers that be. You know, whether and they're putting people in the office as well. Um, what I'm saying is, knowing our history matters. Like Lady L said, if we don't know our history, how are we supposed to keep from going back to it? You know, right. to deem them from repeating the mistakes from the history. You know, uh, there's a lot of history here in Pennsylvania, a lot of history here in Lancaster County specifically uh, that we're focused on and you know, we have to keep it around absolutely sure. um so so folks um it is it is about uh 9 40 right now uh we have about 20 minutes left uh, on on our program want to uh thank you for for waking up with us and joining us for for another episode of uh, tcp in the morning um just a few housekeeping things before we go to our seventh story of the day uh folks the um uh the magazine the tcp magazine online magazine is is out right now um we will put the link in the comment section so that you can go on ahead and click it and you will find on what page i don't know you got to sift through it you will find a special link and code in there that you can just boop press and it'll take you to a site where you can get uh your prom tickets for a discounted price it is early bird special this prom is going on um at the wear center cannot wait um are definitely definitely excited for that so uh, prom tickets are on sale right now early bird special you can access it uh through the magazine and uh yeah september 10th the adult prom so our seventh story of the day, our seventh story of the day, a little bit of a throwback. Yo! MTV Raps is officially making a comeback. Uh, so, Paramount announced a reboot of the iconic hip-hop program set to premiere on May 24th, which is great because I was hoping oh. that it wasn't going to be on MTV because I haven't watched MTV in, in, in years. And it's crazy, um, there was this meme that, that came out about the uh, programming of MTV. A- and I thought it was lying, but it was like ridiculousness, 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 um, uh, like like my, my fabulous life, like twice, and then ridiculousness, 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 ridiculousness. And then I was like, no, that's not true. Went to Comcast, you know, hit the guide and info and, and looked at- Absolutely true. It was, at, I was like, whoa, wow. Ridiculousness is like the baby boy of MTV. Oh, yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So uh, uh, the streaming service uh, released a trailer for the show uh, earlier this week. Uh, the original version of Yo! MTV Raps was a showcase for rap hip-hop artists and culture uh, created by Peter, Peter Dougherty and Ted Dean, hosted by Fat Five Freddy, as well as Ed Lover and Dr. Dre. The influential program that featured videos, interviews, and live performances Ran from 1988 to 1995, and that is according to Variety. Uh, Rap and hip-hop were able to reach a wider audience thanks to Yo! MTV Raps. The show featured performances from legendary uh, rappers, including A Tribe Called Quest, uh, Run DMC, Redman, Eric B., and Rakim, 
and LL Cool J in their careers early and in their prime stages as well. So, the hosts, the hosts, who will the hosts be? Well, um, one of them is, is Conceited. Uh, who, who, who is Conceited? You may know him from Wildin' Out when he says, hey, yo, DJ d Rat, drop the beat. <laughs> then he cuts the beat. Um, and also, everyone's favorite woman, DJ, locally, DJ, Diamond Cuts will also be the host of, of Yo! MTV Raps. Uh, so the reboot of Yo! MTV Raps will concentrate on the current state of hip-hop culture with live performances, live segments, and rap ciphers. Again, Conceited and DJ Diamond Cuts will be the co-hosts. I'm so happy for Diamond Cuts. That, that is that is what's right, up. Right, long way from the college parties. Yep, yep. Uh, so um, the show uh, features several guests each week. On May 24th, uh, Grammy-nominated rapper Freddie Gibbs will appear. Um, pr- Platinum-selling rapper uh, Lotto will, will be the guest on May 31st. And Saba comes on June 7th. Um, so they have a, a great lineup. Um, MTV's Bruce Gilmore and Jennifer Dean will serve as co-executives. Uh, Kurt Williamson, Warren Oliver, and Michelle Kenner of, Holly, of Hollyland West Productions will co-produce the show as well. So, folks... Uh, in addition to the new episodes, 50 archival shows from the original series will also be available to stream on Paramount Plus starting May 5th. So there we go, folks. Yo, yo, MTV Raps. Yo, 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 yo. Today, welcome to the 90s. I'm waiting for a TRL. And uh, 106. 106 in Park. They're coming back, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 106. I, yeah. I, 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 what happened to Cedar's world? They brought her back for like a half a second. And then hits on the street. I'm still waiting for that. Remember Rap City the Basement? That was, they were coming back too. I thought Big Ticket was back. Rap City the Basement is back. Is it? Yep. Rap City the Basement is back. So I, I, I don't mean watch BT. Dang it. So so we're gonna see. Um all the reboots. Yeah, yeah, like like yo, like, again. Uh, come Disney, on, can y'all no. reboot Polly, please, and add it to Disney Plus? Because well, I'm, I'm confused about why Pollyanna is on Disney Plus, but Polly isn't. So if you don't know, Disney, of course, made a white version of a movie. And then they did a black version of the movie. <laughs> so they did Polly that has Keisha Knight Pullum and the mom, um, Felicia Rashad, in the film. And it's a musical. Can y'all please put that on Disney Plus? Look. That is all. Yeah, I think, close up the show. <laughs> I think Young TV Rap should open up with uh, the videos that they use, too. Uh, to first start the show, you know, for their pilot, they used the DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince uh, video, and then to start the show, they had that Eric B and Rockem's video for uh, Follow the Leader. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think they should bring it back like that again. Follow the Leader. Uh, I, I, no. I I think that people are lazy, they so yes, they they will do that. I I I don't like like you. I think they will do that. You can't it be because it's 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 for it's for a new crowd. You have little baby. Like, you put little baby yeah, up but, there. But right. you're gonna get a nostalgic feel. People are gonna uh, watch it because it's it's MTV raps. I don't, like, I don't, I don't think so. You don't think so? Our generation, I, like, 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 yo, I'm looking at. I'm, you think I'm, that? So you think rap is a young man's game? That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> also, absolutely. Like, you, like, like we 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 still support it and everything like that. But but, but if you if you nice, you in your twenties. Yeah, like we're <laughs> we're we're listening to like what. We'll be more likely to listen to our golden oldies right. before we listen to any any new young bull. Like, but that, that that's a, I think to Sarge's point would make sense for them to have a little bit of the old school, bring some of them old videos back, just to keep the nostalgia, keep the old fans, bring them back to, to at the beginning, and then you know transition to doing it young. But I, I see what you're saying. I hear you, but but I think that they for for our generation, yeah, we're, they we're, put the 50 episodes up for <laughs> us <laughs> to relive. <laughs> That's for all of us. To get our kids into it. Right. Right. Well, we used to watch. It's and then, not like you can reboot the show and bring DMX back on. Yep. <laughs> right. You yep. Right. Like, right. got a hologram. You, yep. not, you can't bring Marvin Gaye on the show. Yo, right. I'm, 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 looking at, I'm looking at their lineup, all right? They don't, they don't get anybody in, in like our generation. They don't get anybody in our generation until July 12th, and that's Trina. Like everybody I mean, else is Fre- is Freddie Gibbs new school. Freddie Gibbs raps that lyrical rap though, so he, he ain't a trap rapper, huh? So Freddie Gibbs ain't a trap rapper though. 
So I, I see but what you're saying. But that's more so. Yeah, he's still newer. Right. I that, got what you're saying. And Trina only gets to be relevant because she found herself on Love and Hip Hop. And and that it's part. it's 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 with now, you, you know. And and honestly, as as a TV exec, well, well, well we are TV executives. Let me yeah, not say if good. I was, but yes, as a TV executive, um, um, putting putting together a, a a program, I'm gonna go for the the younger folks because the younger folks they are going to spend money on music and music type things. Like this, this is an easy way to to not only promote um. Paramount Plus, but also to get a whole new demographic in to Paramount Plus because Paramount Plus is really for older folks. So, I right if you watch an NCIS, no, <laughs> that's, it. It, that's, that's what you, you, do. you got Paramount right, Plus. Right, if you're watching that, right. But also, what I've noticed that what a lot of networks are doing is that they're partnering with each other, and so these shows are playing on multiple networks at the same time, or they play on the app first and then they send it out to a bigger network so like the miss pat show that aired on paramount plus for like a year now it's on bet mm -hmm. flight attendant that's on hbo max mm -hmm. but it's also on tbs right so now at this point tv executives they're not even just playing their shows on one platform now yeah. where you can only get it here Right. Like, no, you can get it here, and you can get it from a major broadcaster as well. And that's also then expanding their audience because now not only for those of us who don't have the app or the Plus version, I can watch it on basic broadcast. Yeah. And you've done expanded your segment. You've expanded your um, reach as far as your ad dollars because now you have ads for your show on your stuff and now on the new network that you have it on. And to um, Rebecca's point. Rebecca said, I'm um, Gary. Suburban white girls love rap too, just saying. And and that's that's and that's, that's a, who's spending money. That's a whole new demographic, demographic. That, that yo MTV raps back then did not appeal to. Right. So so yeah, like it's it's it, it was too urban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now <laughs> now now it's now, oh, now it's man. just urban enough. It, it is, it is. Yo, congratulations to them um uh, recapturing this nostalgia. Um, I don't know if I wanted to fail or not, though. Like, I, yo, like, leave the MTV raps in the nineties. Like that was for me. Uh, they're bringing cre cre create yo MTV traps. Yo, one, <laughs> once they brought back the Matrix, I was like, oh, they bringing back everything. <laughs> like, like nothing's off limits. They, they, they made a black man, Chucky. Chucky had a regular <laughs> yo, show. Chucky got a regular. Yeah, Chucky got right. A, it's I was trash. About to say the same thing. Yeah. But Chucky got a regular show, and there's about to be a um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, series. So, like, who needs yo, that? Yo, there's, there's, there's Those another. Those of us who don't have yo, it on DVD. Right, yo. There's another. Leave, leave um, my childhood Michael alone. Myers coming leave out. Leave my childhood alone, America. No, your childhood is <laughs> under attack. You it's under forever. attack. <laughs> it's under attack. <laughs> I want it back. Listen, you, we're going to have to get everything in its original version because yes. even for like myself, like it, I don't like the remake of it. I will I sit and like watch. It, it don't feel scary and enough. See, but I love the original of it. Like, I, like you can sit there and watch this three hours. Like, clowns. there were parts that they left out that were horrifying. Clowns don't scare me. I punch clowns. <laughs> oh, true. don't yeah, worry. Yeah, I am. True. I am. I'm not scared to death of clowns. Only clowns I'm afraid of are the mummers. As weird as that is, <laughs> those are the only clown figures that frighten me. Only clowns I'm afraid of are the ones running this country. Oh, oh, um, oh Cy. Bang, bang. Cy bang, says, bang. Um, uh, y'all heard uh, they, th th they're coming out with uh, that 90s show, a spinoff uh, from that 70s show. Oh, yes. I can't wait to see oh. it. Yeah, I don't want to see in, it. I lived it. They're bringing uh, um, uh, uh, Cunis back. Uh, they're bringing uh, Kutcher back. Like, it's, it's, it's almost like, like, yeah, yeah. Like, they grew up. Yep. And now they now they still now they getting stoned on the back porch. Uh, no, I'm not watching. If you got a cast full of white people, and it's that '90s show, we're growing up in two different areas. I didn't grow up in the '90s. They gotta suburb. do it like the Wonder Years, like they redid the Wonder Years. Right? Yeah, like it gotta be a little bit different. Like I, I want, I want that '90s show, show to be taking show. place that, in Chicago. That, that, that '90s show should be black people. That it's it's not. It's not. It, 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 right, it's I not. want. We, I look, want. But they gonna listen to hip hop and wear baggy jeans. I want that '90s show to be. That, I wanted to be my 90s. Yep, you well, could well, watch that on the TCP Lady app. L, Lady L, I, I mean, your 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 90s is different from my 90s. Though. That is true. You know, um, uh, but but I think that Hollywood pissed off enough people when they made on the Wonder Years black. 
Oh, yeah. That's why these politicians trying to get no. their country back. They're trying to make a different world white. <laughs> Somebody's going to do that. Somebody's going to do that. Don't do that. Somebody's going to make it. They're not going to touch it. Cosby's name's on it. They're not going to touch it. Uh, well, that's why they're going to touch it. That's why they might touch it. Yo, they're going to. I know. I got a chance. They're going to make the Bernie Mac show white. <laughs> oh, you can't it's make It's going to be Louis Black. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, uh, folks, we have about um, eight minutes left uh, on on our, our program. We want to uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, you can hear all of this uh, uh, greatness and many, many more uh, on W. TCP, um, um, our online radio station. Uh, folks, I'm going to have a, a moment of clarity, a uh, moment of... Um, Thanks, God, for granting um, this moment of clarity. Uh, this moment what, of transparency honesty. here. Um, our, our app, our app, we are, we are currently um, experiencing not, not, not issues, but this app world, it's all new. Um, we figured that submitting our stuff uh, for for the uh, review would take about two weeks, and it's taken about a month. Uh, so um, you'll hear more details when it rolls out. Um, when you all know, uh, I mean, when I know, you all know. Um, our apps are currently in review with uh, both Google, with uh, with everything Android, and uh, with Apple. Um, with, with everything iOS. Uh, so again, folks, um, once I find out uh, the final word on our app, uh, you will too. Um, venturing out in, into this whole new world of the digital applications, it's a beautiful struggle. Um, um, but we want to um, bring you the best and most direct content as we can. Thank you for growing with us over these past uh, two years uh, that we have been doing TCP in the morning. Thank you for growing with us over these past five years uh, that we have been doing um, TCP Network, TCP Media Group. On Saturday, folks, if you aren't doing anything and you find yourself hungry, come on down to 735 Lafayette Street where we will be having a meet and greet with uh, candidate Dana Hamp Gulick. Uh, food will be provided by Afro Boricua. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, so uh, folks, again, uh, that is 6.30 to 8.30 at 735 Lafayette Street in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, join us later today. Uh, we have Reset with uh, Reverend Sherry Lupton. She has a uh, guest, um, a special host coming in. Um, and then we have uh, Thunder Thursday with hey. uh, Taekwon Wright. And then... And then on um, WTCP, we have our many, many, many shows uh, rolling out. So, folks, want to thank you for listening. Want to thank you for watching. We have the Will Downing Show uh, playing playing today at at 7 p.m. Um, and then after, um, hopefully, we'll have um, uh, Styro Boys playing. So, um, on that note, folks, want to say uh, Happy Mother's Day to. All of those mothers out there, and you to all those women. mothers mama, mama. to be, may your gifts be plentiful and your barbecue be moist. Lady out. <laughs> hey guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Listen, the adult prom early bird tickets have been released, so go on ahead and check them out because I promise you they are in limited quantities, and that is by design. So go on ahead and get your early bird tickets. For El Promenade, the adult prom taking place September 10th at Millersville University's Wear Center here in Lancaster City. Not only that, but I also want to remind you that if you got some babies, one to six years old, go on ahead and take them down to Busy Body's Play Cafe, now open at the shops at Rockville. Busy Body Play Cafe is an interactive play center for our littlest loved ones again go ahead and visit the great people over at busy bodies play cafe now open at the shops at rockville i can't wait to see you this saturday as we uh do a meet and greet with dana hamp gillick running for the 96th district for state house over to the desk oh yeah don't go away now i see y'all out there viewing i got a good joke for y'all by the end of this joke <laughs> but listen i do want to say happy cinco de mayo Hey. To my Mexican brethren, 
Hey, listen, look, remember, Cinco de Mayo is an important day. Uh, the Mexicans had to defend themselves from the French. It is historically significant, but it is not Mexican Independence Day. All right, so don't say happy Mexican <laughs> Independence Day. You rude, mother suckers. All right, but listen, so to my kings and my queens, my princes and princesses, my baby boys and baby girls, so to he, him, her, she, they, them, we, we baby. baby, we love you. And I want to leave y'all with this little jam. I'm going to ask y'all a question. What has 142 teeth and hold back the Incredible Hulk? Any answers? A uh, shark? Iron Man? Nope, my zipper. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, y'all. <laughs> Oh, a coat man. zipper. A coat zipper. A coat zipper. <laughs> no pair of jeans. Two teeth. Say it. Oh man, folks, <laughs> folks, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Happy Mother's Day, mamas. Happy, happy Mother's Day. Um, to those fellas uh, that have not gotten your mother or your woman anything, um, we are going to Park City tomorrow at noon. Come and join us. Hey. For some fun, some shopping, and complaining about getting these mother-loving gifts because we know that we are getting ties and tools next month. Mother's Day was created by Hallmark. <laughs> Sell cards and gifts. Every, every, that is everything. Yo, <laughs> remind that mama in your life their best gift is you. Is you right? <laughs> it's, it's Mother's Day every day because you a mom every day. I am. It's all coming from people that did not push a watermelon out of a lemon. Hey. Whoa. I've been to the bathroom a couple times. <laughs> but I am I I am the gift. I You're welcome. Right. You, it ain't Mother's Day without children. Hey. Ah. hey. <laughs> Wrap me up. <laughs> Wrap me up. Put a bow on it because what's better than Quiet Storm every day? And on that note, folks, we'll see you in church. I bet you your mama going to text you right now. Oh, you coming to see me, son? You going to spend the night all weekend? My name is Dana Hamp Gulick. I am a candidate for the 96th House District, and this is my story. Born here in Lancaster, um, I went to Manheim Township High School. I went to the University of Pittsburgh, where I earned two bachelor's degrees, in one in German language and one in communications. Um, and then I started my career in marketing. People should vote for me because I'm going to bring the, the bold moves and the vocal advocacy and the willingness to really be strategic and to push on pushable places and pull on the pullable ones. I'm going to do the work that I think is not being done in this district right now. Most important is that I am a single mother to a 17-year-old daughter. I am a caregiver to my aging mother, and I serve on the board of two local nonprofits that help families in crisis. 2022 brings us a brand new district in the 96 that has been redrawn, and we have an opportunity to send two Democrats from Lancaster County to Harrisburg for the very first time ever. There has been the same representative here for 30 years, and a lot has changed in 30 years. Uh, the world has changed drastically since my opponent was first elected. And I think now is the time to replace somebody who is comfortable and out of touch with somebody who is hungry and passionate and, and wants to do this work. I'm going to focus on raising the minimum wage immediately so that families can work 40 hours a week and afford a place to live. Everybody Every family should be safe, healthy, and thriving. And I think I'm the, the person for that at this time. My name is Dana Hamp Gulick. I'm candidate for State House in the new 96th district. And I approve.